What's going on everybody? Welcome to my tutorial on how to generate supersonic flow, oblique shocks and expansion waves over geometry. We'll be looking at this rocket fin as seen in this picture here. And we'll be generating supersonic flow over this fin to look at shock waves. The geometry will be two dimensional, made in CAD as can be seen over here. We have the far field, the fin and the axis of symmetry. So going to geometry in ANSYS, make it into 2D as before. And let's import it now. Right click, import geometry and then select your geometry file. Go and hit generate. And then we'll be making four lines to split the domain into four pieces with the face split feature. So go into sketches, make a line. I'm just modifying some parameters here. Draw a line and then try and fit your geometry according to what your size is. Because every turn in my fin will be one line as can be seen over there. And that is me adding dimensions into my geometry to make it fit. And once that's done, you should go on tools and face split as I'm going to do now. And then split the domain as before. Hit apply and then use the line selection feature and then click your line and then hit apply again. Do this for every single line and then you will have five different domains in your single geometry. It'll be split up into multiple domains as can be seen there. Going to mesh and first make your name selection. So right click on the far field axis and hit control to select multiple lines. Right click the geometry, create name selection and then select far field as your external domain. And then now right click on your fin and then call it fin wall. And then do the same thing with your axis of symmetry. Your default mesh will be quite inaccurate, so let's change the sizing. So set it to fine and then set your smoothing to high and then set your maximum face size and your maximum size to 12 and 15 millimeters. Add face meshing as can be seen over here on each face in your domain. Hit update and then you will see your new mesh. It looks much more accurate, but now let's try and increase it for the boundary layer. Let's add some more elements there. Go to sizing, use the line filter, select one edge, hit apply, change it to number of divisions, set your divisions. This will be according to how big your geometry is, but I will use 100 for mine. Use the bias of seven as according to me. And then you can see that it's quite dense towards the boundary layer. And then do the same thing for the other features as well. And for the line at the back should be the same 100 elements and size because it's the same length as the line in front and then also over over your fin wall set your elements there and then set its sizing this time you won't need a bias if you don't want it it's up to you and hit update and you will see a lot more detailed mesh in this case so that's our new mesh a lot more accurate and good for the simulation so let's set the thickness to zero millimeters and then let's check, check the quality and the statistics Go on quality, you can see it's 0.7, which is not bad. And then go on your aspect ratio, it should be very low, which is good. Go on your orthogonal quality and, and it should be as close to one. So it's 0.97 here. Go into setup, use double precision and use two CPUs because I have a dual core laptop. Check your mesh, density based solver. So go into models, set your energy to on. Set your K epsilon turbulence model for external flow. And then go into your materials, set your air to ideal gas, and then set your viscosity to Sutherland law, which is coefficient method. Change create, hit close. Go into your boundary conditions and then select your domain there. Set your operating to zero pressure because it's all gauge pressure. Far field will be a pressure of far field. Your Mach number will be set there. Your pressure will be there and your temperature will be shown over here. It's in Kelvin, so keep keep that in mind. Your fin wall should be a wall. Your axis should be a symmetry line. So change that as shown. And then let's go into reference values and then click far field to select your reference domain. Solution methods, make it all second order because it's a lot more accurate than first order. And then for monitors, set your, your residuals to something very low. So at least 10 to the power of negative four or lower. Hit okay. And then 
go into your initialization, standard initialization, for field. Hit initialize after. Run calculation, check case, make sure nothing is to be recommended. Check your iterations and then hit calculate. So when you're done, double click on results and then let's set a contour for velocity. Set your variable to velocity. Set your location to symmetry one and then set your contours to 101 for my example. Hit apply. And then you will see the velocity over there because the velocity first slows down as it crosses the shock and then it speeds up again as can be seen in this picture. And that is something which you want. So that means the solution is accurate. Let's check temperature now. And then you will see that the temperature will be the inverse of velocity as in this picture here. It does increase as it goes past the shock. So keep that in mind. Let's make a chart. So location line, call it chart, and then set your points as, the, as seen in the picture, your X and Y values. According to my geometry, that is, it should be a little bit over the fin as shown over there. And then hit chart option, select velocity versus X value or anything you want. Data, data series, chart, X axis, set that to X, Y axis, set that to velocity, hit apply. And then now you will see your velocity first decreasing and then increasing again, because that shows you that it goes past your shock and then comes back into the normal flow regime. So that's it for the video guys. Thank you for watching. Now it is recommended that you watch my previous three videos on CFD because this tutorial builds on that. So keep in mind that I did go a little bit faster because I do expect you guys to have some basic knowledge in ANSYS before you attempt this kind of a simulation. So please watch my old videos if you are a little confused on using the software fluently. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.